Oh my God, is that for French fries, that bucket? Yeah, it's 88 ounces. The size of this bucket is unimaginable. Once a year, for just 12 days, over 2 million folks gather on 322 acres. Some come for the rides. Others come to see exotic animals. Ah! I came for the food. Yes, bingo! It's all here. Food on a stick. Oh, God. Oh, oh. Fried crunchy stuff. Mm. That's a good bite. And even bizarre food combinations. This is so bizarre. Today, I'm after this fair's mega food factory. We did about 460,000 pounds of potatoes. Iconic vendors who put out thousands of pounds of tasty treats each year. We can make about 44,000 cookies in 12 minutes. And it all starts here. Sir? Yeah, put her there. This is our first stop. First day, there are hundreds of vendors here, but we're looking for the vendors who are putting out thousands and thousands of pounds of food. And I notice you guys are doing just that. Welcome to Fresh French Fries. Founded in 1973, they slowly grew from a small stand to the French fry factory you see today. Leading this massive operation, Bill Wozniak. Tell me about what you're serving here. These are chipper potatoes. What's a chipper potato? Chippers, a potato that has an ideal mix of starch and sugar that, according to this stand, make a perfect French fry. How much product you're putting out in a good year? Good year for us, which 2019 was a wonderful year. We did about 460,000 pounds of potatoes. 460,000 pounds? Yeah. That's more than like a shipping container? Oh, yeah. You know, typically, we're selling around about 100,000 units. In the whole fair? Yeah, or more. First, a sack of potatoes is dumped into a receptacle. What is that? This yeah. machine behind me. Then they're conveyor belted up until they plop into the peeler. It's a belt fed conveyor system that has a very particular amount of potatoes that it feeds for our drum peeler behind you. The peeler is lined with sandpaper. A powerful stream of water tumbles the potatoes about until the skins are all removed. Does it turn them into fries too? Yeah, right here. Now they're manually moved to the cutter. What is the perfect width for a french fry? Taking this big bulbous beauty and instantly smashing it into uniform starch rods. We're looking for crispier exterior and kind of a baked potato inside. So we're kind of looking for that centimeter ish range. Centimeter? Yeah, Very cool. European. Yeah, right. The raw fries are loaded into the frying basket. First, they get fried in hot oil. That cooks them through evenly. Then they're moved to even hotter oil, which gives the fries a crispy, crunchy exterior. Finally, the hottest oil of them all ensures the crunch lasts as long as possible. We end up having them drained and then they're dumped right behind you and then lightly dusted with salt or vinegar or ketchup. Amazingly, these chippers go from a whole potato to salty, crunchy french fries in just a few minutes. All right, so the fair, it's bustling, it's wild, it's crazy. The best part about the fair is there are hundreds of food locations and everybody is taking turns going to this stall and that stall. You don't want to blow your whole empty stomach at one place. Now, even though I've said that, I have purchased the largest French fry that you can get here at this particular vendor. This behemoth of a bucket right here costs $14. Good thing I memorized that earlier. They're hot, they're steamy. It's like I have a nebulizer full of French fry scent. Hold on, pull up a picture of a nebulizer. No, not that one. Pull up a nebulizer on a horse. Yes, like that. I feel like a horse with a nebulizer that's full of french fry scent. It's very specific, I know. The moment of truth. Beautiful french fry. It's greasy, it's hot, it's burning my fingers a little bit. Let's try it out. Mmm. Oh, that's very satisfying. So just a little bit of crunch on the outside. There's just a little bit of salt on there, and it's just so much different from like a McDonald's french fry. That would be much thinner, more crunchy, but it wouldn't have this really satisfying, mashy, steamy, starchy center like this has. I gotta try some ketchup. I'm gonna get a triple fry. It's more surface area. It's gonna really grab onto this ketchup. Look at that. It's like a torch in the night. Let's try it out. Mm-hmm. Now, I would recommend don't start with the ketchup because then you're going to be giving your palate a little too much razzle-dazzle. Start plain, just the potato, just the salt, and then when your palate grows weary, you can add some ketchup. This today is my breakfast. We're just getting started. We have a lot more to see. Let's keep moving. Every year, just 300 food vendors feed millions of state fair attendees with a total of 500 carefully curated menu items all approved by the fair board. Competition to get into the fair is fierce. Potential vendors know that in just 12 days here, you could make a small fortune.
Next up, we're meeting a state fair food boss with a menu item so outrageous, it took five years to be approved. Brad, give me a handshake. I'm very excited. This interview is going to be rated C because it's about to get cornographic. Are you into cornography? Ah. Uh. Brad Rebar grew up with the Minnesota State Fair where his family ran a sanitation business for over 68 years. Brad got the idea for selling corn from another fair in nearby Wisconsin. I tried it for the first time. I've never seen roasted corn in my life. I took a bite, turned around, bought another one. It's so good. But before he could turn this idea into a dream business, he had a lot of convincing to do. Everybody told me nobody's going to buy sweet corn. It won't sell. And it took five years for the fair to approve the idea. Wow. To approve corn. They're like, listen, guys, this guy has a radical idea corn, and that took five years to approve. There are 12,000 different species of corn in the world, and that's not counting deep sea underwater corn. Ah! But Minnesota is well known for its sweet corn. Very tender, very sweet. This seed actually comes from Japan. Oh, really? Yeah. Although the seeds flew in from Japan, this corn was grown here in Minnesota, specifically for this event. I'm curious how much you sell in a good year. Yeah. You can measure it however you want. Like bathtub fulls is what I usually use for measurements. You want to put it that way, we're probably doing 600 bathtubs a night. Wow, that's a lot of bathtubs of corn. Yes. <laughs> First, they take the refrigerated sweet corn and slide it down to the soaking tub. You try to keep the corn refrigerated first to keep the starch from building up. Here, it soaks for 10 to 15 minutes before it moves to the grill. If we get real busy, it might not hit the water very long. This custom-made gas grill was built specifically for this operation, ensuring a nice, even heat and pinpoint caramelization. I don't think I've ever had a well-roasted, really like caramelized piece of sweet corn, so I definitely want to try that today. Add water to steam the corn, or maybe they're just doing that for the cameras. I'm not sure. Once cooked, husk it and dip it in a vat of melted butter. Is it salted or unsalted? Salted butter. Salted butter. The seasoning is up to you. Brad, thank you so much. I'm so pumped to try your corn. I've tried a lot of different corn, but I've never had this type of sweet corn in Minnesota from Japan. Okay. Let's see. Enough of the interview, enough of the story. I finally have this big, thick piece of corn in my hands right now. On one side, it's kind of rare. On the other side, it's a more medium well. So you have a variety of textures and flavors here. And he said it actually caramelizes the sugars inside. So that should create a really new, unique type of taste. I'm gonna go for it. I don't, where do you start? Do you start corn in the middle, on the side? Do you, do you eat it like this? Yeah, you eat it like this. I don't think she's giving me the right advice. All right, let's give it a shot. Oh, mmm, that's some good corn. It's so delicious. It's salty, it's peppery, and it's just buttery enough. The thing with sweet corn is it has a lot of flavor already. You don't want to overdo the butter. I've seen people who have destroyed their palates through years of junk food abuse. It needs to be literally half butter for them to enjoy it. But here, they just give it a little bit of a dip. Not a lot of bit of a dip, just a little bit of a dip. Brad, not Bradley, inside he told me I was gonna have a corngasm and I think he, uh, he's right. This video is now demonetized. The Minnesota State Fair started in 1854 with a mission to promote the state's agriculture. At first, the fair's location changed every year, but in 1885, it found its permanent location right here where we are today. It wasn't until 1989 when the fair got its first giant bird leg vendor. Meet Cheryl. Cheryl, can I have a handshake? Cheryl and her husband have sold turkey legs all over the USA. We do this fair, we do the South Carolina State Fair, the Florida State Fair, and the Florida Strawberry Fair. Oh, that's a lot of traveling. But in order to roast up this beautiful turkey leg bounty, they had to go mobile. This turkey mobile drives from here to Florida. When it's parked up and ready, this roaming rotisserie can roast up to 700 legs at once. That's my kind of food truck. How much does it cost for one? It costs $15. That seems very reasonable. It's huge, it's protein packed, it's a lot of food. Do you see people trying to go at this by themselves or are they sharing it among a small community of people? A lot of times a family will come up with five and they might order three to five. If you look at them out there, there's nothing left on the bone. Usually, the only time you'll see a turkey leg whole is Thanksgiving. How many of these are you selling during the whole Minnesota State Fair? And in that case, you gotta share it with your already buzzed up Uncle Sonny. We usually bring a semi-load in. What is 
Is it Mike 8 or 900? Here, it's just you and this Flintstone-sized bird leg, a fair snack that became popular at Disney. We use the same turkey leg that Disney World does. So this is the exact same turkey leg from the exact same company in Tampa, Florida. So it's already cooked when you get it. Exactly. Why do you choose to do it that way and have you always done it that way? I've just not found that the raw turkey leg is as good of a tasty turkey leg. Are you talking about eating a turkey leg raw? The process starts with their pre-smoked turkey legs. These plus-sized thighs roast in the turkey trailer for one to two hours. If you go through 200 cases in a day, you don't have time to cook them raw. Then they're moved to the grill to crisp up the skin. And the raw does not taste like ham. These taste more like ham. Finally, wrap it in tin foil to keep it hot and serve. Today I've basically been eating like a vegetarian. French fries, corn, but now it's time for some meat. Here, look at this. A big, beautiful turkey leg all nestled up in swaddling clothes like the baby turkey Jesus. I think they put tin foil on there to help preserve the heat. We're gonna slowly peel that back like a beautiful, meaty banana. Yes, this is a giant leg. This must have been one beast of a bird. Ooh, it smells good. It smells smoky, fatty, greasy. Let's go for it. It's so hot, it's so juicy, it just slides right down. It's oily, it's fatty, but it actually has more of a hammy taste to it than a turkey taste. I'm not sure why a hammy flavor is so desired, but I think that's what happens when you smoke the meat. It just gives it more of a cured kind of flavor to it. Oh, yes. Now this is just a pure skin shot right here. Wait, I'm gonna pop that back. Oh, it's just a whole different texture, a whole different flavor, very desirable. That's what you want. All right, so right here, guys, this part of the turkey leg is like a release valve. I'm gonna pull that back. Yes, bingo! Look at the inside of this, that looks so good. I feel like I've been eating for 10 minutes now, and I'm not even halfway done with it. This is a great value. And to imagine, they're selling a literal truckload of this every year here at the State Fair. Incredible. Every new vendor at this fair hopes to become the next Martha, a Minnesota State Fair icon who turned a simple recipe into a million dollar business just by selling cookies. Martha? Yes. Put her there. Okay. Meet the queen of this cookie dough kingdom, Sweet Martha. She and her business partners started with a tiny cookie stand. Over 40 years, she built it into a cookie empire. It's all just one thing on the menu, right? That's right. And that's genius about what you do here because <laughs> a lot of people might think, oh, I should have six or seven really good things, or you could take one thing and really perfect it and make a lot of it. Absolutely. So for you, in a really good year, like 2019, yes. do you know about how many cookies you sold? In 2019, we probably sold at least about 3 million cookies a day. Their super secret cookie recipe is an amalgam of several mother's recipes. They've got the same great taste from day one, but over time, small adjustments were made to the recipe, so it's better suited to cooking at such a large scale. Let's talk about the recipe. Can you write it down exactly for me? Well, I would not do that, no. Oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Martha's cookies start with their secret dry mix. What is more secret, the ingredients or the ratio? Then add shortening and water. Probably both. Probably both, okay, I'm gonna guess. When the mixture is combined, it's time for the chocolate chips. Flour. Yeah, there's flour in Pickle there. Pickle juice. No, I don't no, think I'm so. I'm already messing yeah. it up. All this goes into a dolloping machine, which portions this giant glob of cookie dough into perfect cookie-sized chunks and spreads them on a baking tray. The chunks are manually spread out to create enough space for each cookie. When the tray is ready, it's placed on a cooking rack. This whole rack goes into the oven for 10 to 12 minutes, depending on the weather. Basically, we have all open windows around here, so mm. we're sort of working outside. So the humidity could affect the cookie. Exactly. When the cookies come out of the oven, they're still too gooey to eat. They need a quick rest before they're served in a cone or a bucket. Is it still going to be warm when I bite into it? Yes, that's what we time. Piled high and served to eager crowds who might only get to try this treat once a year. All over the fair, you can see people walking around with these buckets. And alas, it is my turn to try it out. Martha, thank you so much. So nice to talk to you. Our final meal of the day, you have to end with something sweet. Even though you eat a bunch of savory, rich foods, you always have room for dessert. This is a lot of dessert. This whole thing is four dozen cookies. And you're like, cool, thanks for the math problem. So that's approximately 48. Boom, nailed it. 
Take that, Mr. Johnson. Oh, they're so nice. When you grab onto it, you can feel that the edges are just more crispy. They've bubbled up more and it's doughy in the middle. Oh, the edge, the edge is gonna be crispy. Mmm. Oh, it's so satisfying. Great texture, great crunchiness on the outside. Then as you get to the inside, doughy, soft. And the middle just melts on your tongue. The only thing I'm missing right now is some milk. Let me get some milk. Hi, now I have milk. Take the cookie, give it a little bit of a dip. Oh my God, Santa Claus would murder a child for this. It's that good. I love it. That is just our first day here at the Minnesota State Fair. Today was all about food on a huge, massive scale. And somehow, at the end of the day, we kind of just ate a whole meal. We had a turkey leg, a side of fries, and a side of corn, and some cookies for dessert. I liked every food, I liked every story today, but man, that turkey leg was a huge standout for me. It was so big and delicious and satisfying, and then capping it all off with some nice, ooey, gooey, soft cookies. There's nothing better than that. I think I need a couple more cookies and a glass of milk, and I'm ready for some sleep. Next time we come back, we're gonna be looking at the Minnesota State Fair's most bizarre foods. Stay tuned for that. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. How do you eat corn? Do you eat it this way, or this way, or this way? That way. This way? No. Oh, yeah. that way. I thought so. Someone else told me something different. Oh my God, is that for french fries, that bucket? Yeah, it's 88 ounces. This is what you used to be able to get at McDonald's before that stupid Super Size Me movie came out and ruined it for everybody. We are here to see people who are cooking school. Uh, I can do this. People who are, oh, I like, you're so encouraging. You're like, uh-huh, you can do it, dear. These are like the size of Arnold Schwarzenegger's caps in the 1970s. Have you had this corn before? Yes. And what'd you think? Oh, not this exact corn, but... Oh, but you had a piece of corn? Yeah. Good. That's a unique experience. That is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A piece. You know, this is when I need a fan, because they can say a piece with me. I'll give it five seconds. Really?